Thank you for joining us for a look at The Deadlies, a deck shedding card game from Kurt and uh, Smurt and Ken Dagger, who was so sure we would love it, he insisted we take a review copy home from Origins. Thanks for that, Kurt. The Deadlies was designed by Paul Saxberg and features artwork from Lee Furman. It was originally released in 2020 by Smirk and Dagger Games and has since been localized for a number of different countries. Despite featuring seven sins, The Deadlies is a three to six player game with rules for six being a variant. A single round of The Deadlies takes about half an hour, but we found that most groups like to play a few games in a row. Yeah. The Deadlies has a very reasonable MSRP of only $15 US, making it an easy purchase for Take That card game fans. And the Deadlies is a card shedding game, meaning that you're trying to play all the cards in your hand. Features seven suits, one for each of the seven Deadly Sins, each of which has cards numbered one to seven. And then there's a few special cards. On your turn, you can play a set of cards from the same suit, a set of the same number, a straight or a single card. Now, each of the Sins has a different special effect. Now, the first person to void their hand three times wins the game. Normally, this is where I would point you to our The Deadlies unboxing video, but we don't have one of those this time. Oh. This is because we picked this game up at Origins not only to check it out and review it, but also give us something to play after a long day of working. Now, The Deadlies comes in a nice small card box with a cardboard insert that's basically just a divider. You get a total of 52 cards, 49 split over the seven suits, and one copy each of the special cards, Corruption, Purity, and Halo. The card art on these is fantastic, as is the card quality. You mm -hmm. do a lot of shuffling in this game, as you will often go through the deck more than once during a single game, and I have no worries about the cards being damaged by this. Plus, if you are the worried type, you can always leave your cards. All the information you need about each suit is right there in the cards in pretty large font. The only potential issue with them really is that because of that, they aren't reversible. These cards are designed more like trading card games, like a Magic the Gathering card than, say, a playing card. Along with the cards, you get some nice thick cardboard tokens for tracking your wickedness level and a very clear and concise rulebook with lots of full color examples. Yeah, really no complaints here at all in regards to the components or quality of them. Well, why don't we get into an overview of play? All right, so this is one of those nice and quick to set up games. Everyone takes a weakness token, points it at them, so the six is facing them. Halo cards placed in the center of the table, the deck is shuffled, and everyone is dealt six cards. The most angelic player becomes the starting player and is dealt an additional card. On a player's turn, they play one or more cards from their hand, with the goal being to play every card in their hand. The tarp top card played has its effect activated. Now, cards can be played either individually or in three groups, the same suit, the same number, or a straight of any length. Each of the seven different suits and the two special cards have a different effect. Pride has you check another player to see if they also have pride. Wrath makes people pick up cards. Gluttony lets you draw a bunch of cards or steal from other players and lets you play again. Envy gives you a chance to swap hands with another player, having sloth cards in play, and can cause you to draw more cards. Lust lets you and a partner play together, but with some risk, and Greed has you pushing your luck. Uh, then there's the three special cards. When you play the Purity card, you get to take the Halo card in your hand. A player that manages to play Halo gets to void their hand. Then there's the Corruption card, which counts as every card type, all seven suits, while well, it's in your hand. And when you play it, you get to pick one of those card abilities to happen. And when a player empties their hand, they reduce their wickedness by two, and draw a number of cards equal to the new level. The first player to get down to zero wickedness wins. Now, the rules also include a six player variant where everyone's wickedness and level starts at four and everyone starts with a hand of only four cards. You only have to void your hand twice to win when playing with six. So jumping back to earlier this year, Origins 2023, and Kurt from Smirk and Dagger insisted we take a review copy of the Deadlies away from his booth at Origins I really had no clue what to expect. At the time, he said something like, it's Uno for gamers, you'll love it, as he walked away after tossing it on top of a pile of games I was holding at the time. I hadn't even heard of this game before this, didn't even know it existed. So it was on Sunday and the last day of the con, and we continued doing con things for the rest of the afternoon. That night, we decided to hit a local dive bar for some celebratory end of con drinks and fried cheese curds and brought the deadlies along. I read the rules as we waited for the first round to show up, and we tried out the game for the first time. Now, the first thing we noticed is there is a bit of a learning curve here, right at the start of the game. Not a steep one, but one that you have to get past. 
And this comes from a couple of things. The first being try to, re to remember what, the sets, what sets of cards you can play. The second is trying to remember what each suit does and exactly how they work. Mm -hmm. While the card text is right there, it's more of a reminder or summary. So it's worth having the rule book open during your first couple of plays so you can reference it each time a new suit comes up. Now, that said, it didn't take long at all for us to internalize this information. By the time we were done our first game, game one, we had most of it down. There were a couple suits we had to double check the rules for. Greed and Envy seemed to give us the most trouble. But by the time we finished our second game of the Deadlies, we were good to go. And since then, I honestly hadn't even looked in the rule book until earlier today when I opened it, just to make sure I wasn't missing or forgetting anything for this review. Now, even with that little bump in the learning path, it's not a hard game by any means. No. Uno for gamers is not a bad description at all, as any gamer who isn't dead set against card games for some reason will find some fun in this. Yeah, since that first play on Sunday in Columbus, we've been enjoying each and every play of the Deadlies. Of all the games we brought back from the con, this, this is the game that has gotten the most plays and the most plays by the widest number of people. This includes my entire, my, my immediate family, Gwen, Jen, and Deanna, my aunts and uncles from out of town, friends that have come down from up north to visit, a mix of local gamers at our public play events and more. I mean, first off, it's a card game, so it's much more approachable to people than uh, then when you mention Uno, it becomes almost instantly familiar to most people. Yeah. Then you mention the seven deadly sins and folks will either get more interested or titter in amusement. And I honestly think that's the secret to the deadlies is how familiar it feels. It really does give you that Uno feeling, but without rounds that can go on forever or the nastiness of multiple draw two or draw four cards being played. Yes, we know the official rules. You're not allowed to do that, but who doesn't? And no having to remember what the current turn order is. Are you going left? Are we going clockwise? Are we going counterclockwise? Or possibly, most importantly, no need to keep score. The keeping score, or lack thereof, is really, I think, the secret sauce of this game. We aren't all math whizzes who can sum up a dozen cards in our hands with a single glance. And not having mm -hmm. to be embarrassed at taking a bit longer to do the math can be a big deal for some people with forms of social anxiety. Now, once you learn what the various suits do, I actually find the Deadlies easier to play than Uno and definitely much faster. Added on top of that is the Seven Deadly Sins theme, which I think is part of the game that I, I like. I think it's great, but I can see how that theme may turn some people off. Like for us, it's never been a problem. We played games with adults and teen kids alike. Despite being about sins, the cards are like kind of cute, uh, maybe a little bit creepy. They're definitely not disturbing. And I've seen some interesting euphemism used by people playing lust cards, but there's no real adult content here. As always, feel free to talk about it before playing if there's even a slight chance things might get uncomfortable. Now, another thing some players and groups may not enjoy is the take that nature of this game, just like Uno. Messing with other people's hands and trying to stop the current leader is how you play this game. While I wouldn't call it confrontational, you're still going to be stealing cards from other players, forcing people to draw cards, swapping hands with other players, and basically just trying to prevent other people from winning. I think more of this game is trying to prevent other people from winning than trying to win on your own. Now, to me, that's one of the highlights of the game is that it's so interactive and that you can never be certain that your next play will be. Even if you're set, you're like, I am so good. My next turn, I win. Yeah, until your hand gets filled with cards and someone swaps your hand and that Halo card has gotten away. Like, yeah, the game can be quite chaotic. And I love that part. What I especially love is once the Halo card comes into play, because then it becomes about stop the player with the Halo or become the player who plays the Halo. And the game totally like the focus changes. Everyone gets more intense and leans in there and we fight over the Halo. And I think that's hilarious. Yeah, this is one of those things where it's really only a problem if it turns into bullying, where yeah. everyone is just being mean to one person. And that's not OK, regardless of the game you're playing and should be handled outside of the game. So I got to say, every time I have played with a kid and their parent on the table, I know where those wrath cards are being played. Finally, I realize this is a quick filler party game. It's, it's a silly, have fun, socialize type of game. While it's a game I've actually filled an entire game light with playing round after round. This isn't a deep thinky game where you're trying to outsmart and outplay your opponents and prove who's the better player. This is a silly laugh out loud fun kind of game, and it could turn off more competitive players. Though even most, if not all, competitive players will find this game light enough to be able to put away the desperation to win and laugh some. 
If you dig quick playing card games that are pretty easy to learn, but have a bit of meat on them, games that are a step above mass market favorites, but don't get too involved or go too long, you're probably going to enjoy the deadlies. This is even more true if you enjoy take that, screw your neighbor type games, and can laugh when you are one card away from victory, only to have your hand filled up with cards before you get to go again. Yeah, I had no clue what to expect when we were handed the deadlies, and now I'm super thankful Kurt tossed us a copy at Origins. This game really has been a huge hit with everyone I played it with. And this is the kind of game I can see bringing out during casual game nights and public play events for years to come. There you have our thoughts on The Deadlies, a quick playing, high interaction card game from Smirk and Laughter that won us over by game one. I love it when someone suggests a game to me and saying something like, you'll love this. And they're right. This is especially true when I have no clue what that game is beforehand. What's the last game someone recommended to you that you knew absolutely nothing about, but took a chance on and ended up loving? Let us know about it in the comments below. For a more detailed look at the Deadlies, including a better description of what each suit powers actually do, be sure to check out Mo's written review over on the blog at tabletopbellhop.com. And if you've got thoughts on this game, take that games in general, Smirk and Dagger, or really anything else that got brought up during this review, I do invite you to keep the conversation going over on the Tabletop Bellhop Discord, which you can find at discord.tabletopbellhop.com.